Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So I know some of you have been waiting for this for a long time. I think it's finally time for me to slowly start venturing into costuming and historical clothing and making the historical clothing. Sewing was one of my biggest hobbies when I was a teenager, but I sewed purely for fun, basically. My sewing was always very intuitive. I would just make garments by literally pinning fabric onto my body and <laughs> taking it off and stitching where I pinned. And it worked all right, I guess, for you know the purposes that I had in mind. But I really wanna pick sewing back up and get better at it and actually make things that are nice and wearable in normal adult life. <laughs> I would absolutely love being able to do that, to make myself the most beautiful garments, you know, inspired by any time period from history that I like. To begin my journey, making a vintage looking skirt is a good way to start. It's not going to be historically correct. Um, I'm not ready for all of that stuff yet. First thing I need to do is to become best friends with this little one right here. This is my vintage sewing machine. Don't worry, you will get to see her from different angles later on, but it is from the 60s. It used to belong to my grandma and I have had it for a few years. Um, quite a few years actually. I have been sewing on this uh, for a very long time, but I never really got it. I guess I like I knew how to make like a basic straight line but I think it's time now that I learned to work with it a little bit better. I have a really fun project in mind and I bought myself this fabric which is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful pattern, beautiful autumnal color and a very nice and thick material that I think will be perfect for autumn and winter. So I want to make this into a knee length skirt, maybe a little bit longer than me with like this pinafore front and then strapped, you know, crossing down the back. I really hope it's going to work. Another thing I did was look up the manual for the sewing machine. I used to own a manual. It was always in Slovak and I don't really know the sewing jargon, I guess, in Slovak. I only know it in English because all the tutorials you ever watch are in English usually. But I found the manual in English and I downloaded that and I just read through all of it. So I should now know how this works a little bit better. And the second thing I did, which I think was really important, and it is a nice segue into today's sponsor, because today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. So I went onto Skillshare and I looked up some sewing classes. So there are two courses that I followed. The first one was a quick kind of introduction to a sewing machine and the functions it has and how to you know use them, which was really helpful, even though her machine was obviously a lot more modern than mine is. The basics are pretty much the same, so you should be able to apply that knowledge to pretty much any machine that you own. And the second was a tutorial on sewing or a class lesson on sewing a vintage style skirt. So I am going to use that tutorial today as the base of my skirt, the skirt itself, and then a waistband, and it has a zipper in the back. I've never sewn a zipper before, so I'm really, nervous excited i guess about that and then i'm gonna you know upgrade it with the whole pinafore thing skillshare is an online learning community which offers over 30,000 different courses and fields ranging from fine arts to business and productivity all through sewing obviously graphic design photography they cover so many different subjects and when i'm done with my little sewing project here you can bet i'm gonna back, go back there and learn about everything <laughs> because I love learning about new things, especially of the creative kind. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to the Skillshare database so that you can join the communities and classes and learn about whatever it is that you want to learn about. Over 7 million people are using Skillshare so you can connect with people who are following the same courses as you and talk with them about the project. Skillshare is giving away two months of a premium membership which gives you access to all the courses when you follow the link below. And after those two months, it's only $10 a month so if you want to learn a new creative skill which I highly encourage you to do you're never too old to learn and it's a lot of fun then hop on over to Skillshare and see if there's anything there that you'd like to learn so okay I'm gonna make the skirt today let's get started so this was a last little bit of fabric and I got a major discount on it which is incredible <laughs> I'm super happy about but that does mean that it is not the length that I wanted it to be but I think I think this should be enough um, for this project. I'm very bad at estimating how much fabric I need for any given project But I want to make a skirt that's pretty full now I think I'm just gonna go back to old-school Lucy and determine the width and length of my panels that I'm gonna be using for the skirt by simply draping the fabric around myself because 
that is what I know and that is what works and the lady in the tutorial didn't really give any specific measurements so let's do that then. <laughs> My fabric is a rectangle but just barely so if I fold it in half Oh, that's around exactly the size of my waist, which is great. I also still have a lot of length, so I'm thinking maybe if I fold this in half as well. I'm really hoping this is the right length. Oh yeah, that could definitely... Oh, that oh, I just love when this works out. Okay, I think this is just gonna be my length. Um, and that leaves me with four pieces of fabric. I will use three of them to be my skirt and then I will use one for the waistband, the pinafore piece and the straps. I love when the process is simpler than you thought. <laughs> Luckily it's a nice straight pattern so I can actually use that to guide me in this. I now have four panels of approximately the same size. The differences will be, you know, hidden away in seam allowances and hems and things like that. I have taken the one that was the most noticeably wonky and the smallest, and that one's going to be my pinafore parts and straps and waistband. So I'm putting that one away, and now all three of these need to be pinned together and then sewn together into a huge tube, as it were. Salvage to salvage is my length, so I'm gonna pin the sides that I cut together and then we should be good. So I'm going to make sure all my salvages are at the top and then I'm gonna pin all these together into a nice big tube. I've got my fabric here right sides together, two pieces on top of each other. I've made sure my cutting lines align, the ones where I've cut along the pattern, because that's my straightest line I presume. And I'm gonna Pin these together. First, before I sew them. panels are sewn together now and I'm going to attach the third one so I'm gonna take one of the sides of one of these the one that seems to have the straighter cut and once again I'm gonna attach them along this line right here my three panels are now attached and they are forming this one super long strip so the last thing I need to do is to Again, put the right sides together and attach these final two loose bits and then I will have my skirt. Alright, so next step is to press my seams. So I'm going to take an iron, I have an ironing board here, and I'm just going to flatten out my seams here. And this is going to help make everything look a little bit nicer. And also make the next steps of the project just a little bit easier to do. Because after this we are also going to insert the zipper. And I am pretty nervous about that because I have never inserted a zipper before. Not even by hand. Like, just never. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see how that goes. I do know that I have a zipper, like, zipper foot on my machine. So I should be able to do it. We're just going to try. And if I fail then that's okay as well. <laughs> This is trial and error, just like any process. Right, I'm gonna do that to all the seams and then move on to the next step. Now it's time to attach my zipper. I have chosen this zipper right here. It has a cute little mid-century looking closure there. So I have the side here that is going to be the top of my skirt, so the part that's going to be attached to my waistband. And I am going to align this zipper. I'm gonna align the top, which has a little bit of... Um, seam allowance I guess to the top of my fabric and then I'm gonna come down to where the end of my zipper is so this part that has a little metal closure on the bottom here and right there I'm going to mark my fabric with a piece of chalk 
And then I'm going to go back in with my small scissors and I'm going to open up this seam up until that point so that I have the opening here for my zipper to go in. So it's gonna be attached like that. All right, so then I'm gonna unzip my zipper. Align it here. I'm gonna make sure that on the outside, the fabric sits right next to that little plastic bit of the zipper. And I'm gonna pin it down like that, making sure again to line up the two idle bits here up top that are gonna be sewn down later. Okay, I'm gonna add one pin right at the bottom here just to be sure that doesn't go anywhere. So before I start sewing this up, I'm gonna just zip it up to check that it actually aligns properly. This is how it's gonna look on the finished skirt. I'm quite happy with that, so let's sew this up. Now the video that I watched, um, the lady suggests to hand sew this. I wanna try my zipper foot, so I'm gonna try that and if I fail, then I can always hand sew it after all. Guys, I just attached a zipper. Where is it? Where is it so I can show you? I just attached a zipper using my machine. <laughs> I am very proud of myself right now. I know this might not be a big thing, but I have never done something as complicated in sewing before. So yeah, this is coming from someone who basically just does reparations and alterations. And that's about as far as my sewing skills reach. So I am very, very happy with myself here. So the next step is to start making my gathers. This is gonna be a gathered skirt. I hope it works. If the fabric turns out to be too thick, I might have to do pleats instead, but I did a little test strip and it actually pleated up quite nicely so let's hope it works and I can get it to um, gather it gathered up quite nicely so let's hope I can get it to gather down to the size of my waist what I need to do now is to do two or three rows of basting stitches around the top of my fabric here so that means putting the machine on the widest stitch length so the biggest stitch length for me that is setting number four and I'm gonna go around the whole skirt in three rows next to each other of this stitch which I'm then going to use to do my gather so I will do that and then I think I'll be back to show you how it works if it does work <laughs> fingers crossed I hope you can see this at all because the thread matches pretty well but I have three rows of basting stitches down here and then I have the ends of the threads right here so what I'm supposed to do now is take just the top thread of all three of these so that will be this one pull on those and start gathering up my skirt by using this these three threads as a guide oh the top one here is very short and this is gonna take a while but this I'm gonna do all around the skirt. You can already see the gathers forming. And uh, yeah, this is how I'm gonna gather my fabric. So <laughs> I suspect this will take a few hours as the skirt is very long, the fabric's pretty thick. So I will see you when this is done. It is now the next day and I have my skirt here looking pretty good if I may say so myself. The gathers came out really nice. It didn't take hours at all. I think it took maybe 15 minutes to half an hour max and they look really really good it is very tightly gathered it gathered down to almost exactly my waist size it is a little bit wide on me but that's okay because I'll be able to tuck a nice warm sweater into it and it is an autumn winter garment after all so that's great now the next step is to attach the pinafore part the straps of course and the waistband so I have already cut out my pieces here I have three of these long strips that are just cut from that fourth square that I had left. So these are all the same size. And when you fold these double, this is about the width I would like for both my waistband and my straps. So I have two straps and a waistband of obviously three pieces. And then I have my little pinafore part 
yeah, goes like this. <laughs> and I'm gonna attach that as well. I think I'm going to leave the skirt for now and make the pinafore waistband and shoulder strap construction first and then attach the whole thing to the skirt later. So I think I'm gonna start with my longer pieces here. So I think I'm just gonna fold them in half, sew them into a long strip like this and then I will see about the exact length later on when it's all attached, I think. I am fully improvising now, just so you know. <laughs> but I think all of this should work out. For the pinafore part, one piece of fabric is just way too thin because it needs to carry all that weight. And the skirt is rather heavy, so I don't want it tearing, you know, where these straps are attached. So I'm gonna do a double layer of fabric, so I cut out another um, rectangle here that is the same size. And I'm going to sew that shut along these lines and the top right here. So three sides are gonna be sewn down. I'm gonna leave the bottom open for now because that's going to be attached to the waistband. All right, I decided to cut my waistband in half so that I have two strips here that are going to be attached on either side of the pinafore part. Um, and the skirt will be attached directly to the pinafore bit. So I got that in half, I sewed everything together. So I have two long strips right here and two small ones. And then I turned the sewed rectangles inside out so that I have these nice little tubes. I have one that it hasn't been turned inside out yet here, so um, I'm just gonna do that one really quickly. And then I'm going to press these down with my iron so that they are nice and flat and not as, you know, tubular, I guess. And then it's time to attach the waistband to the pinafore. Okay, it's time to pin my waistband to the pinafore bit. So I have my right sides together here. I'm gonna almost align them with the bottom, but I wanna leave a little bit of seam allowance so that I can actually close off the pinafore bits. When you're sewing inside out, be sure to always pin things like these towards the inside. Otherwise, um, you'll have sewn them inwards because when you turn it inside out, yeah. You get it, right? <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna start with one side and then do the other afterwards so that it's a little bit less bulky. sewn along the sides and the top here so now if I turn it inside out hopefully we'll have a really nice front part to the dress skirt I think it's turning into a dress by now try and get those corners to pop out all right not bad I'd say okay so I'm gonna press along the seams here and then we'll move on to the next step I just hand finished the bottom of my pinafore piece so that is nicely hemmed and the next thing I did was attach the waistband and pinafore to the actual skirt so I lined up the bottom of the waistband to the lowest basting stitch or the lowest gather as it were so that the most voluminous part is coming up right underneath the waistband so I made sure my pinafore piece was centered I even tried it on just now and it's looking really good. I am very, very happy at this point. So now I just need to attach these pieces. Um, I'm a little bit worried 
that my sewing machine might not be able to handle it because this is a lot of fabric at this point. I might try a little bit, see what happens, and if I feel like it's not gonna work, I'm gonna have to do it by hand as well. I am so glad that worked. So at this point, we pretty much yeah, we're getting really, really close to the finish line. I'm super excited. I'm absolutely loving how this looks so far. I think it looks really, really nice. Way above expectations so far. So there are a few things I still need to do. I need to finish these back bits. I want to do like a little overlapping thing with the hook and eye, I think. It's just gonna make for a nice closure. I still need to do the top straps, obviously. And we still need to hem the skirt. And then there are a few little finishing touches I want to do. This fabric is gonna fray, so I want to just make sure that, you know, this is nicely attached. But the first thing I actually want to do is to try and iron down the top of these pleats, because they do bulk me out quite a bit in the narrows part, and it's not the most flattering look. But I don't want to cut this off, because this is the salvage, and it's not gonna ravel, so... I'm gonna try and iron it down, see what happens, see if it works. But I'm gonna make sure not to touch this part, obviously, because that's where we want it to be nice and bulky and frilly. In the back here, I have these two little excess pieces of waistband, and we need to finish these somehow. So I think I wanna do. I think I want to have this one ending right here and then the other one kind of coming down a little bit further so that they overlap like this and then I can do a hook and eye closure right here. So I'm just gonna cut them down to size and I think I'm just gonna hand stitch the openings right here. I just put on the dress and then I asked Robert to pin down these little straps um, so that they looked symmetrical on my back and then at the point where they cross each other. So I'm just gonna attach this really quickly. And then we're actually almost done. I just attached the back of the straps and made a little rectangle here where they cross. And now I tried on the dress just now to see if I can um, put it on and take it off with the straps attached. And turns out I totally can. So I'm gonna save myself the trouble of making buttonholes and attaching buttons. Um, and I'm just gonna sew this down for now. I do think I'm gonna leave this back bit a little bit longer so that I can maybe attach a button later if I'm so inclined. But for now, I'm just gonna sew this down. And then I think all there's left to do is to hem and then we're done. Oh my gosh, guys. I have pinned the hem of the skirt down and I followed the pattern again so that it all lines up on the bottom even though the panels aren't all the same length as you can see here. finished here it is oh i am so incredibly excited about this i can hardly believe i made this like how <laughs> i am so happy i think it is perfect i'm very happy with everything the length the cut the fabric i absolutely love this fabric it's so nice and warm it's gonna be perfect for the upcoming seasons and i am just Pretty proud of myself if i might say so for making something like this i mean this is way way beyond anything i've ever made before completely wearable and will be worn for sure and yeah oh, i'm so happy i was able to make this work yeah now that i know that i can do this i kind of feel like making more so maybe there will be more so with me videos in the future for me let me know if you would enjoy that i do think i'd like making them but yeah we'll see so i guess it's time to end the video here, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Watch it. Yeah, I think this is my first Sew With Me video. Aside from maybe a few super simple projects that I made a few years ago. But yeah, anyways, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for loads more beauty and lifestyle content. There will be another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Yeah, 
that's it <laughs> bye